There's a popular saying, people don't hate change, they hate being changed. Let me say that again. People don't hate change, they hate being changed. So why is that? Typically speaking, people respond to change in one or two ways. They either perceive it as a threat, a sense of a threat to their physical safety, and they perceive it as a threat to their physical safety. The response typically is they're gonna freeze, they're gonna fight, perhaps resist the change, or they're gonna flight and run away from the change. The so-called freeze, fight, flight response to change. What's interesting is the behavioral outcomes and how this impacts our life and our behaviors and where we work in our personal lives. Typically speaking, people become a little more negative. Their performance at work may drop off. They become distracted, they're unclear in their thinking. They may want to avoid situations and they become highly disengaged. And perhaps more importantly, they have increased levels of anxiety and stress. On the other hand, when people perceive it as a reward, okay, this is the opposite threat response, it's a reward response, in which they anticipate and pursue the reward of that change. Somehow it's gonna better themselves than what they are today. And when this occurs, the individual typically is more positive in their outlook, more innovative, more focused, more creative, more collaborative, more engaged, and more importantly, they have increased levels of resiliency. They're they are able to overcome change better. Because more often than not, when change occurs, there's other changes that will occur afterwards or with that change in which the person has to deal with. And if they're in that reward state, they're more likely to be resilient and overcome and, and see those changes in a positive light. That's the opposite if you're in the reward side of it, right? Where your resiliency drops and all change is increasingly perceived as a threat. So what's really interesting and what I plan to share in the webinar with you in more detail is the biological or neurological responses to change. Neuroscience research over the past couple of decades has given us a wealth of understanding. We've unlock, we're unlocking the, the complexities of our brain and our biological responses to, the, uh, to, to things like change. So typically speaking, when I talk about that threat response, the neurotransmitter, a chemical called cortisol, kicks in and it is what we want to avoid. This gets passed down to pituitary glands and other parts of our body, but increases our level of stress and anxiety. On the flip side, when it seems reward, dopamine clicks in, which is something that we, we want to desire, right? And it makes it make us feel better, right? So that kicks in and that actually leads to the more positive outcomes and from a behavioral point of view. So in the webinar, we're gonna explore this in greater detail with a focus on what can we do about it. And what's really fascinating is the research is really helped, behavior neuroscience research has really helped us in many ways in which how you and I and others, people in our work teams and in our personal lives, that we can develop new ways of thinking, new habits, and, and practice those habits and those ways of thinking in which we can better understand our responses or their responses to change, either as a threat or as a reward. My name is Dr. Michael Sullivan. I'm an instructor of the master's course on organizational change leadership at the University of Wisconsin Platteville and I welcome you to join the upcoming webinar Overcoming Change in which we will explore many fascinating topics like this in a very inter interactive, fun, and an engaging way. So please look below or perhaps to the side for more information, how to sign up for what is promising to be a very, very fruitful and engaging and fun webinar.